In 1886, a massive industrial complex stood just south of what is now the Port of Milwaukee. The North Chicago Rolling Mills Foundry was huge, even by modern standards, with some 1,500 workers converting iron ore into steel for the nation's railroads. So this really was a company town built around this mill. That's why Bayview exists. It was mostly Polish immigrants working at the foundry, and the conditions were brutal. 10 to 12 hour days, six days a week for a little more than a dollar a day. All the cards were in the employer's hands, so labor tried to organize to strike a better balance. And by the spring of 1886, that effort had crystallized into a national campaign for a standard eight hour workday. The slogan was eight hours for work, eight hours for rest, eight hours for what we will. A general strike was called in Milwaukee on May 1st, and by May 5th, the Rolling Mills Foundry was the only major factory still operating. That morning, a crowd of several thousand striking workers marched on the plant in an effort to convince those inside to join them. The governor at the time, Republican Jeremiah Rusk, responded by calling in the National Guard. He was a decorated Civil War general and someone who would tolerate no threat to the established order. So when he was told a mob was coming down Bay Street to Bayview, he, he pretty much said, shoot to kill. When the shooting stopped, seven people lay dead, including a 12-year-old boy. Despite the bloodshed, Rusk was celebrated by many as a national hero for saving Milwaukee from anarchy. Others were horrified by the loss of life. This was not unlike Newtown. This was not unlike Columbine. No, this, this was people dying at the, the hands, in this case, of their fellow citizens. And it was that sense of outrage that would eventually serve as an important catalyst for the budding labor movement. What it did was it really galvanized the working class to say, we're not going to be cowed, we're not going to be intimidated. It would be several more decades before the eight-hour workday would become the law of the land. But after paying the price in blood, organized labor had carved out a permanent place in American culture and stamped itself irrevocably into the very DNA of the city of Milwaukee and the state of Wisconsin. At least that's the way it looked for the better part of a century. Today, the state and the times have both clearly changed. In 2011, Governor Scott Walker's controversial Act 10 took away the right of most state workers to bargain collectively. And as the protests over that legislation played out in Madison, local labor leaders conjured the ghosts of those slain workers at the Rolling Mills Foundry. We did think of this. Uh, we did think about Governor Rusk because we also remember that the first thing the governor said that if necessary, he would call out the National Guard. Fortunately, that part of history did not repeat itself, and Cochran hopes it won't have to for organized labor to rise again. It's the nature of people, I think, that once they are attacked like that, that they will organize and they'll come back. It might take a long time, but much like 127 years ago, I think when you really hurt people very badly, uh, they do organize and they do come back. 